<gasps> Hello, you guys. I'm officially a homeowner. I got the keys, as you guys saw in my last video. Actually, I don't really know what video we're on. I'm just filming so much because I'm over the moon about this home. Like, I am so, so excited to start renovating in here. And what I actually have to start doing is getting some of the work done in the house. So I kind of mentioned to you guys that there was some work that needed done, there's some plumbing work, the house needs tented for termites, which some of you guys had questions on that, and actually the termites are just deep wood, dry, dry wood deep termites. I think that's what the wording is. Sounds inappropriate. Anyways, it's just in the foundation, and it's not like within the actual home, it's just under the house, so they had to tent it to make sure, or they are going to be tenting it to make sure. And then we have some plumbing work. The chimney in the fireplaces also needs to be like remortared along with the foundation downstairs. But today I wanted to go through and start measuring out some of the rooms. I wanna go ahead and kind of get like some ideas for the spacing that we have some ideas for like the layouts in the rooms and what each room is actually going to be because I don't exactly know. There are six bedrooms in this house, four bathrooms, which is absolutely crazy. So we do have a lot of space and I want to utilize it really well. I think it's like right here. Can you see that divot? Like this, I feel like the wall, like, I feel like there's like a patch right there, like a line patch. Let's give this ball a measure. Oh wow, this is 20, 260 inches long. 175. The fireplace is 80 inches wide exactly. 80 inches wide. 138. The nice thing about measuring though is that it's probably the exact same upstairs, so you don't have to measure twice. Yeah. Wider. Okay, been here for a couple hours with Marie. We have measured all of the spaces throughout and I want to draft out like a little bit of a floor plan. I'm not a huge floor plan creator, honestly, because I'm somebody that loves to just try things out, bring things in. If I know that they'll fit, I'll just go ahead and try it. But I do want to have some sort of an idea for when I'm ordering furniture and just it's like a visual reference to look back and forth. I brought in one piece of furniture. We have a piece of furniture in the house. If you remember, I got this at my parents when I was thrifting for $20 at Goodwill. It was such a crazy deal and I don't exactly know what I want to do with it yet. I'm thinking maybe of turning it into a sink vanity or using it as like a piece of furniture somewhere, but it's so beautiful so I had to grab that. It's been about a week since I last talked to you guys and the house has been tented. So the termite tenters came over, they wrapped up the entire house. I should have taken a photo in front of the house while it was wrapped because it's really the only time I can take a photo in front of the house and post it on social media. But the house has been tented and something else that happened was the chimney has now been fixed as well. So if you guys remember, there was actually a problem with the chimney. Now this house has two batch elder fireplaces which are beautiful and they're actually working. Now what they had to do in the chimneys was actually do a layer of mortar up the sides of the walls. So if you look up in here, you can kind of see the light gray coloring and that's the mortar that they applied. So before it was really broken down up here and this now is just a coating, like a layer over the top and that's just gonna keep it secure and make it more so that it's gonna lock everything in that was eroding before. So this happened in the lower fireplace and the upper fireplace. I also swear that they added whatever this is. Wait, is there stuff? What is, is that sand? What is this? Why is there sand down here? What is this black stuff, by the way? Does anyone know? I swear this wasn't here, but I also don't know if it was here. This fireplace at one point was painted gold. Oh my gosh, look. <gasps> look how gold it is here. 
So if you guys can see, I'm in the courtyard area right now. These little wooden pieces, these are actually the chimneys for both. So both of the fireplaces are along this wall here um, and the chimneys go up and they had to make sure that the wood up here also wasn't a fire hazard because this technically shouldn't be here, but I kind of like the detail of it and it blocks the chimneys a little bit. So they wanted to make sure that it was okay to have them up there and they decided that it was. So we're gonna be keeping those as well. The empty house tour went live yesterday and I was reading the comments from you guys and there was a bazillion comments saying that I should get the light fixtures appraised in this home. And I wanna give you guys like a close up of each of the light fixtures. If anyone knows where any of them are from, some Somebody actually sent me some of the light fixtures in my email in the upstairs bathroom. They were like $5,000 a piece sconces, which I couldn't believe. And I'm gonna take a little clip of each of the light fixtures. Let me know if you guys would like to see a video on them getting appraised. Also, that black stuff transferred to my finger. Um, I could definitely get them appraised and have someone come in and like check them out. I'm mainly interested in the one in the hallway. This one over here. Like this light fixture, you guys, is my favorite one. Uh, the owner told me it was an original 1920s alabaster pendant light and it's so pretty. The veining in it is stunning and I love the little brass detail on the edge. I also want to share with you guys something that I found out today which was a really, really exciting thing. Well, I found it out the other day. So in this bathroom here, we have all of the original tile work but like I mentioned to you guys in the tour video, the tile work is in such bad shape. Like some of it's really nice and it's pink and yellow in here. So that's the color palette. So that's the color wave tile that they did in this particular bathroom. And as you can see, like right here, there's a big patch of pink that doesn't match. But look at this. We have the yellow hexagon tile on the floor. And I noticed that in the kitchen, because I'm wanting to remove the tile countertops here and I'm wanting to remove them over there, I wanna do like an actual marble countertop. I just don't like the yellow and green mixed together. I'd rather keep all of the green, let that shine in this space and then remove the yellow. But I want to move the yellow tiles from here and carefully take them off. Of course, all the tile will be removed very carefully. I'm not going in with a hammer and smashing it all because I want to preserve these yellow tiles to fix some of the floor tiles in here. Some of them are just broken, dingy they just need some fixing we have the square tiles in the back and all of these square tiles over here as well which can be utilized in here for the square wall tiles and something else i want to do is i absolutely hate how there's this white section i would love somehow to see if i have pink edges oh actually the other bathroom might have pink edges and i could read you the yellow all the way down here to bring that over. Now this is a bathroom that has a bunch of tile work that needs fixed. Like the entire floor, honestly guys, like is pretty much coming up and like all of the tile is cracked all around. It's just like super dingy and dirty too and I cannot stand those three tiles right there. But there is the edging so we might be able to remove some of the pink tile in here and relocate them to the other bathroom? I'm not sure, but that's kind of my thoughts at the moment. I love this bathroom. I would ideally not want to do anything to it, but it's really not, it's just not the best. Like, I don't know, and the tile's all chipped and cracked around here. It is broken all over the place. I'm over at the house right now getting a quote on the hardwood floor refinishing because as you guys know in here in the bottom unit we have light pine floors very similar to my apartment that I had prior which I'm just kind of over and then up here we actually have darker wood floors they look a little light uh, that's just the lighting in the camera at the moment they're a bit darker than this but I actually want to go even darker a lot similar to the ceiling so similar to this color in both of the units so I have a guy over right now he was recommended by my realtor Jonathan he specializes in old homes and especially in hardwood floors so I'm gonna let you guys know what he says he's currently doing some measurements and um, yeah so we'll have to see what he says because I know that the process of refinishing hardwood floors McKenna told me is extremely intense and she told me it'd probably take me around a month to do both of the units and I don't know if I want to spend a month sanding the floors Oh no, there's a scary noise coming from here. Okay, 
Okay, why is this happening? Where's the landlord? What is that? Why is it doing that? Now they finished the mortar on the foundation yesterday. So if you can see, they re-covered all the walls with mortar because um, they were kind of crumbling away, if you remember in my first video. And they also remortared all of the foundation walls. But down here, I don't even know what this is. Like, this is making noise, but the, the air conditioner's not on, the heater's not on. They also added like this little brace here. Look, there's Marie. Hey, Marie. This is your room, Marie. This is your room. They added these braces as well. Oh my gosh, guys, I just found some tile in here. I wonder if this is any of their, probably not the original tile. It's probably like things that they tried to patch with. I have no idea what's happening in the basement downstairs. It sounds like, I don't, that's not the air conditioner. That has to be the heater, I'm pretty sure, because the AC units are in the backyard, so I don't know what's happening, but I texted it to my realtor to see if he happens to know what it is. Now, what is this? Is this a hole in the wall? There's literally a hole in the tile, I'm confused. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a rundown on when we're planning on moving in here because I realized I haven't even disclosed any of that with you guys yet. So the reason we haven't moved in yet was first off because there was quite a bit of work that needed to be done. We are still waiting on the plumbing to be finished. That's happening in just a couple of days. They were a little bit more delayed than the other companies were. So once that is done, then we're gonna have more of an idea on the actual move-in date. But I also am wanting to refinish the floors in the units because the upstairs unit primarily it's darker which i love i think i want to go like a medium dark tone in both units i'd love your guys' help on that as well i'm not sure yet but i think i'm going to post like a design info video next after this one so like probably sometimes next week where we can have that discussion in the comment section but um i want to redo the floors in both units and that's going to take about three weeks to a month so we're actually not going to be moving until the floors are done that way we don't have to move everything around and live in like a construction zone and i'm also going to be meeting up with my friend Zoe's dad tomorrow. Um, Zoe actually owns a pizza shop. If you guys remember, I made that really cute pizza sign for her shop. And her dad is a contractor and he's gonna meet up with me tomorrow to go over some of the actual like physical changes I wanna make in terms of ripping out walls because I've already gotten one quote on the upper unit to rip out those uh, dining room walls. And it was like $100,000, you guys. So he said he wants to come over, take a look and see everything I wanna do because he'll be able to give me some ideas on what I can and can't do and all of that. So I'll meet you guys back here tomorrow with Zoe's dad. We're gonna open here, 36 inches. This is right, it's right between the outer. You can actually kind of see where they might have cut up uh, yes. here before. Way before the switch, see the Yeah, switch? right before the switch, yeah. It's a 36. And that's perfect. Finish opening, and we're gonna arch it. Arch, yeah, to match the other. Because you have the header beam already. Uh-huh, got it. This is a small gray wall. This yeah. building, every wall is small gray wall. Okay. This one goes very well. Gosh, I thought that this one might not be because there was one so close. Every wall. Why not? Wow. It's a six inch. Yeah. It's what, would a little, what would a non low bearing wall be? The skinnier one. The, a skinnier wall? Skinnier one, the five and a half. Oh, wow. Right. That's definitely it. This is the drawable you can do. This is the big engineer. Yeah. The engineer over here, you can do this calculation. A cross beam is more than. Because I thought it would be so nice to have it like a whole open kitchen with like an island in the middle and like a table as opposed to all these walls everywhere. You're passing the 14 feet, which requires a little population. So 14 feet is right here. Yeah, I think you can do it. If you really want, you can do it. Yeah. It's easy. Oh wow, he says it's easy. <laughs> Okay, let's get, let's get started. Every house, let's get started right now. Every house, <laughs> every house is touching. We yeah. need walls. Yeah. In here or something, just to make it a little more, like, because I kind of got this idea out of my head. That's not $120,000. That's, that's what they just literally told now, me. You just need to column post underneath. Mm -hmm. Really for spring engineer over here. He goes to the collection. See what they will involve. What need to be. If you were, like, if you were to estimate how long something like that would take, to do to demo these walls yeah. by yourself at a month and a half, month, month and a half. Okay. Just it's two walls. Yeah. Yes, if you keep the structural, uh -huh. this open window, like the header, same thing, engineer. Yeah. It's old house. Yeah. But look, what is this? <laughs> I can move it. 
And they literally just in, like hardwired these and hung them on a nail. <laughs> it's so, it's just such an ugly bathroom. It's, it's so dark and like dreary in here too. To add a light here? Yes. Like at, like at some point? Yes, but hanging, you can drill any holes. No, no, you're hanging. Yeah, hanging with a conduit. What's that? What's a conduit? The conduit is like a pipe to protect the wire. Oh, so smart. then you just bring it. You it's just a nice pipe. Yeah. Protect, protect it and uh -huh. paint it. Got it. But not drill, you can't drill beans. No, yeah, so you just run it across and like Correct. paint it to look similar. Correct. Got it. Yeah. So I talked to Belin earlier and I had to go film. I've been working on a makeover in between um, kind of working on the house as well. And he was so knowledgeable, you guys, at everything. And also I apologize, I still have a cold, or it's not a cold, I'm just congested. I think it's allergies. Um, and Belin gave me so much insight on what could be done. He basically said anything I want can be done in there, but it does come with a price and it does come with a time frame. So he did mention that if I wanted to remove those top three walls, it'd probably be about a month and a half just to remove those. And that's not even to refinish the floors because the floors I, oh my gosh the floors aren't even connected I don't know what I'm gonna do you guys I don't know I think I might just leave it as is honestly like I would love to know what you would do so totally let me know in the comment section below but I do know for sure I want to open up the archway in the stairwell and then I'm waiting for quotes back on the walls and the upstairs so I'll keep you guys updated I was not at all planning on filming anything for this video today until I just got a crazy call from the plumber who was doing the plumbing work over at the house. I'm actually at a friend's place right now. I'm doing a makeover in here, which is coming out on the channel shortly. And I got such a bad call. I probably should have filmed when the call was happening, but I didn't even like register to film. I was like, couldn't believe what I was hearing. Basically, the plumber called and said that while they were fixing the work that they found during the inspection, they also realized that there are two vertical leaks that are happening in both of the upper bathrooms that are leaking into the walls of the lower bathroom, and they need to do exploratory searching and open up the walls in both the lower bathrooms that have all the original tile work, all the original fixtures, light fixtures, everything, which was not at all the plan. Like, you guys should have seen me on the phone. I literally was, like, freaking out. Um... And so now I'm trying to figure out, I actually ended up calling Jonathan. Thankfully, Jonathan is helping me, even though the like the purchase of this sale, you know, is already done and he was my realtor. He doesn't have to help me anymore, you know, but um, he's helping me. He actually ended up calling the plumbing company just to get like a better understanding. So I'm waiting for him to call me back. So I'm actually going to head back home. Um, wasn't even planning on filming at all, but this little thing just happened. With this sort of leak and how it's happening is it's behind the walls, right? So yeah. in order for you to kind of figure out where it is, they need to open up an area and inspect that plumbing to see if there in fact is a crack. There looks to be some sort of crack, but I know your worry was uh, to not destroy any of the original tile work. He said basically though, this is exploratory work. So you would start at one point and see what's going on. And then if you have to go further, then you would take the next step and figure out, okay, how do we fix the, the, the problem now that's being presented? And, and, and let's say like it's actually, you have to go up to the bathroom upstairs because he was saying, that there is a possibility like let's say if it were bad that you would have to kind of remove the tile and stuff in the upstairs bathroom which is not ideal but it is at least remodeled so it's not original oh yeah i don't care about i'm gonna remodel both those bathrooms so i don't i really don't mind what happens in those ones but i'm assuming that it wouldn't even really matter because the leak would be starting there so they probably wouldn't even have to remove that much because it would be like at the level of the sink yeah, and he also said it could be like a, a more minor issue. It could be just the toilet. He, they just don't know because of where its location is behind the wall. So his rec recommendation is to start with opening up that section, having them take a look. They can put a camera up there and see what's going on. He thinks that it may just be one of the original uh, pieces of plumbing that may have deteriorated similar to that sewer line that you had that was cast iron. It just may be past its time, but once he looks into it, he'd be able to, to figure it out, kind of give you an understanding as to what's going on. Um, another thing is that he also said that, because I asked him, I said, well, if, if water like that is escaping from a, you know, a pipe, would it travel to other areas of the house? And he said, because it's a toilet, 
it, it, there's not a huge amount of volume of water that's going through, but as I mentioned before, you know, <gasps> we should pee in the water and see if the water is pee. <laughs> that you leaks. Should go, you should you should pee and then put your nose up to the wall. Yeah, and smell. <laughs> that's a good idea. Genius. trying to make fun of this situation well i'll say that talking to you though was much better because when i talked to him he was literally like yeah we're gonna have to rip out the walls in both of the bottom ones and i was like well it has original tile work and he's like yeah we're gonna have to rip them out and i was like oh okay great he said that the tub from upstairs uh that line so i mean at least from the upstairs bathroom that's remodeled i mean that tub is like plastic so you could remove it and kind of have it like put a camera down it to maybe see. He said, he said it because of its age though, that pipe, it might be, you know, there might be filled with rust, but I think those are all options you should try to explore before, you know, obviously getting into that huge, huge demo. Yeah, true. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, it is now Saturday the 23rd, and this is all very much filmed real time. Tomorrow's actually my birthday, the 24th, when this video is going up. Happy birthday to me, because the bathrooms are broken. Um, <laughs> I just don't have a quote yet. I'm really filming all of this very, like, in the moment. Currently editing, but realized I didn't even address probably a big question that you guys have, which was why this wasn't found out during the inspection period, which was my main question when the plumber called me. And basically he said that a lot of times during inspections, only the horizontal pipes are mainly um, looked at because those are the ones that normally have damage. Vertical pipes are a lot harder to get damage within them, I believe. Also, this might not be word for word what he said. This was a couple days ago. I'm trying to recall exactly what he said, but he basically said that vertical pipes, it's, you have to run the water for a long period of time or you have to really like watch them for a long period of time to check if there's leaks and during inspections you can really easily check with horizontal pipes you can see visually a lot of leaks in horizontal pipes but most times you can't in vertical pipes so sometimes they come up later after inspections when things are being worked on and that's just what happened in this case and keeping you guys up to date because I want to post a bunch of videos and keep you in the loop about absolutely everything so with that um, I don't have an update yet i don't have a quote we're probably gonna find out next week what happens i might even share it with you guys on instagram so if you're not already make sure to follow me over there it is lone fox home and yeah um i'm also super excited because i'm just gonna let this linger in the back of my mind for now once i get a quote and let them start doing their exploratory search essentially what we're thinking they're going to do now guys is actually in both of the lower bathrooms there is a bit of drywall above the tile. The tile's not all the way to the ceiling. So they're gonna open the drywall above the tile first and hopefully we'll be able to figure out what the leak is from there. But if not, they are gonna have to move it down lower, I think. Next week, we are gonna start with the design. Like I wanna start brainstorming. I ordered a bunch of tile samples, paint samples, like we have stuff to play with you guys. And so next week's gonna be starting with the design videos. And I'm excited. I hope you guys are loving this so far. Um, I've never done anything like this, so I'm trying to document as much as possible. And I will see you guys back on the channel next Thursday for a brand new video. So make sure to subscribe if you are not already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.